Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to see how we can use nanoparticles to deliver indium compounds for cancer imaging and therapy. This work was published by the groups of Hong Yang and Feng Yang in the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. In their paper, developing a novel indium-3 agent based on human serum albumin nanoparticles, integrating bioimaging and therapy. The compounds studied in this paper are thiosemicarbazones, which are a class of molecule that has previously been shown to have potent biological effects, including antibacterial, antiparasitic and anti-cancer activity. These thiosemicarbazones are thought to act on cancer through several different mechanisms, including chelating iron, modulating ascorbate redox cycling, increasing membrane permeability, and most commonly, the inhibition of ribonucleotide reductase. There are many examples in the literature of compounds of iron, copper and zinc showing good biological activity. However, there have been relatively few examples of indium-3 complexes, which this paper explores. The synthesis of these compounds is rather trivial, as the ligands are made by simply refluxing the desired thiosemic carbazide with quinoline 2-formaldehyde, which produces the target thiosemic carbazone ligand. To generate the indium complexes, the ligand was reacted with indium trichloride in a mixture of methanol and DCM at 100 degrees for two days. Upon cooling, this produced crystals of the pure compounds. In total, the researchers synthesized five different compounds for screening, which varied the functionality on the terminal nitrogen atom. All of the compounds were mononuclear, with one indium atom coordinated to one molecule of the ligand. Four of these compounds showed a six-coordinate distorted octahedral geometry with one molecule of solvent coordinated to the central indium atom. The compound, bearing the pyrrole functional group, was five-coordinate and lacked the solvent coordination, showing a distorted trigonal bipyramidal geometry. These compounds were initially screened in a number of cell lines. A549, which is a lung cancer cell line, a bladder cancer line, T24, a liver cancer cell line, Hep G2, and finally, healthy lung tissue, which were WI38 cells. Neither the ligands nor indium trichloride showed significant activity in these cells. However, all of the metal complexes showed good activity, with the C5 complex, which had two methyl groups and the terminal nitrogen, showing an IC50 value of just 0.76 molar in A549 cells, with a selectivity index of 1.2 when compared to WI38 cells. With the most active compound now identified, the researchers then explored the synthesis of nanoparticles formed using human serum albumin. This protein was chosen as it is highly biocompatible and has previously been shown to increase the absorption of bioactive molecules. The nanoparticles were produced using the desolvation method, where an aqueous solution of HSA and the C5 complex is first basified using sodium hydroxide to generate charged protein particles. These particles are surrounded by water, which is then displaced by the addition of ethanol, which forces the protein to aggregate into nanoparticles. Glutaraldehyde is then added to stabilize the nanoparticles. It does this by forming imines with terminal amino groups, cross-linking the different proteins together and ensuring that they will remain stable and not dissolve when returned to an aqueous media. These nanoparticles were characterized using scanning electron microscopy and dynamic light scattering. This showed that the nanoparticles prepared with complex 5 added were approximately 50% larger than those produced with HSA alone. The nature of the binding between the indium complex and the HSA particle was then elucidated using X-ray crystallography. These studies showed one molecule of the indium complex bound within the 1B subdomain of HSA. This is consistent with the mass spec analysis that indicated that there is a one-to-one -one ratio of indium complex to HSA protein within the nanoparticle. Upon binding to the albumin, one of the chloride ligands is lost, and instead, a coordination bond is formed to histidine 146. The cytotoxicity of these nanoparticles was then assessed in A549 cells. This showed a significant increase in both the cytotoxicity and the selectivity when compared to the indium complex alone, or to the indium complex bound to the HSA protein, but not yet made into nanoparticles. This effect could be explained by a greater uptake of the complex when made into the HSA nanoparticles. This was proven using ICP-MS, 
which demonstrated a higher concentration of the indium complex within the cells when administered as a HSA nanoparticle. Western blot experiments corroborated this finding and showed an increase of HSA protein within the cancer cells, and these effects were shown to increase with time, showing that a longer incubation period gave a greater uptake of the C5 complex. In addition, these Western blot experiments showed that the A549 cells express a large amount of secreted protein acidic and rich in cysteine, also known as SPARC. This is known to bind strongly to HSA and can explain why the 549 cells take up more of the compound as the WI38 cells secrete only a small amount of SPARC. To prove this hypothesis, they incubated the A549 cells with methyl beta cyclodextrin, which is a known endocytosis inhibitor. This decreased the uptake of the HSA complex in a dose dependent manner, suggesting that the HSA nanoparticles first bind to the SPARC protein and are then endocytized into the cell. Once inside the cell, the nanoparticles are able to release the indium complex. This is favoured by low pH, which protonates histidine 146 and breaks the coordination bond. This is quite an important effect, as tumours are often more acidic than healthy cells. This hypothesis was confirmed by synthesising an analogue of complex 5 with an imidazole ligand replacing a chloride ligand in order to mimic the histidine amino acid. Studying this compound at low pH shows that this imidazole ligand can be lost in acidic environments. To further demonstrate the anti-cancer properties of these nanoparticles, they then tested their ability to inhibit the growth of tumour spheroids. These are three-dimensional spheres of tumour cells that better mimic the tumours that occur in vitro when compared to normal cell-based assays. The nanoparticles proved to be highly effective, showing a significant decrease in the size of tumour over seven days. With this strong in vitro data, they could then move into in vivo studies. Tumour-forming nude mice were administered with both the C5 complex and the HSA nanoparticles by an injection into the tail vein. The fluorescence of these compounds allowed for their localization to be visualized, and this showed that the compounds initially distribute throughout the body and then localize to the tumor. In the case of the C5 complex alone, this had mostly dissipated after 12 hours, whereas in the mice that were treated with the HSA indium complex nanoparticles, they showed that even after 24 hours, there was still a significant concentration of the indium complex within the tumor. After the sacrifice of these animals, the tumor volume was studied and this showed that the nanoparticles containing the indium agent had a 74% tumour inhibition rate compared to the control group. This was significantly higher than the C5 complex administered alone. Having demonstrated the efficacy of these compounds in vivo, the researchers then turned their attention to elucidating the mechanism of action. They studied the expression of cancer genes using gene chip analysis. This showed that the administration of these compounds altered the expression of genes related to intracellular transport, metabolism, transcription, immune system, receptor signaling, apoptosis and cell cycle. By analysing the expression of these genes, it suggests that these compounds may act by inhibiting tumour growth through autophagy, apoptosis and the PI3K AKT signaling pathway. Studying the tumour xenografts of A549 cells, they could find evidence for autophagic vesicles that would support the hypothesis that autophagy is one of the mechanisms of action. This was further supported by Western blot analysis that shows an increase in key proteins associated with this pathway. To study these vesicles, they labelled the microtubule associated protein light chain 3 with a red-green fluorescent protein and this showed an enhanced accumulation of the C5 complex and the HSA nanoparticles within these autophagosomes, providing more evidence that this pathway is involved in the mechanism of action. They were also able to demonstrate that apoptosis is another part of the mechanism of action by using western blot analysis to show changes in the expression of proteins associated with the PI3K AKT pathway. These proteins were then visualised using immunohistological staining that showed a change in the expression of CASP3, AKT and BCLXL proteins in tumour tissue. With all of this data taken together, they proposed the following mechanism of action. The HSA nanoparticles containing the indium complex can first bind to the GP60 receptor which is known to bind HSA protein and absorb it into the cell. Once inside the tumour tissue, this can then bind 
to spark on the cell surface and is then endocytized inside the tumor cell. Once inside the cell, the acidic environment causes the release of the indium complex and this triggers the cell death through autophagy and apoptosis. Well that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and in the next video we will look at the total synthesis of a barrow